And uh, I think we have um, our fifth uh, subscriber today. Maybe. Maybe sixth. Um, and I talked to her on the phone and got her to subscribe. And uh, we're going to have to do that for each one. We're going to have to go out there, talk to them on the phone, and say, hey, come talk to us and like look at our channel. And because that's really scalable. It is. Two things that don't scale. There. The, isn't there a book like that? So I just wanted to give a quick update because it's the end of the day. Um, it's a really good day. Uh, I think we got a lot accomplished. We were able to work through the game a lot more today. Um, actually do a trial run of working through the new bridge format, which I think is um, going to get some neat updates. We're also you know, deep into mid-journey, working on some new renders for some of the characters and things for the game, trying to find a new style for that. Um, I think we decided on some really interesting directions for um, just making things more fun, more interesting, uh, more exciting, I think. Um, not too much else to cover today, just a very quick update. Um, I think one of the things that we are going to do as a stunt for the sticky landing page is to um, double down on what we've been doing with mid-journey and show that while you can create a page, a landing page, or copy, or, um, <laughs> anything you really want using chat GPT and mid-journey, um, it's really difficult to tell a compelling story through platforms that don't really quite yet get how to capture human emotion by connecting with authentic moments that normally um, only other humans can empathize with, really. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how we can trick chat GPT and things like that into empathizing, into seeing some of the, the humanity in certain moments by guiding it in certain ways. I think there's an opportunity really to show kind of the stark difference between the quality and of the content that a human writer can create a, you know, an expert storyteller, somebody who's used to working with words and working with emotions and drawing other people into a story versus a, um, a well, um, something that is kind of using the n noise of everything that exists on the internet to generate approximations of other things that we try to get it to approximate. Um, and there are, are, you know, there are ways to guide the, the machine and try to, to put a, a, a soul in there too, but it just requires a lot of coaxing. So is it actually easier to try to build the story yourself, to be an artist yourself, to be a to be somebody who can create beautiful 3D renders? Or is it faster and easier to take the shortcut route? Um, and do you get something that inspires the, the next version? So one of the things we've been wondering is, can you get to like something that we can edit, something that we can move with as the first terrible rough draft. Like, can you rely on the, um, the output from these machine learning models as inspiration? I think we're going to see 
over the next two to six months what it looks like to have the rough draft generated by AI and then have us take the second pass, the refinement, the honing. So maybe AI can help us diverge and we can then look at it and decide what to converge in on. We can take the design thinking process and incorporate AI into the earlier stages. I think that might be a way of making this stuff uh, work for us and not seem like it's going to totally wreck everything with terrible, horrible content um, and absolutely ridiculous artwork that just like explodes in popularity. Um, it's about, I guess, focusing and converging on themes that then get other people to see kind of the story you're, you're looking to expose, I guess. Um, but anyway, good day. Uh, we, we had good conversations, and I think that kind of just sparked that, that thought. Um, happy day. Happy day.